Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another day of Super Kids Online. I am so glad you've chosen to join us today. And I have Silas and Joshi with me. And just like we do in Super Kids, we're going to do our handshake, our high five, or our fist bump of fellowship. Go ahead and do that at home with whoever is around you. And we're also going to do something else like we do in Super Kids. Often we talk about one of our favorites. So today it's a little strange, but I want you to think of who your favorite villain is. Joshi, who's your favorite villain? Darth Vader. Darth Vader. That's a good one. Silas, who's one of your favorite villains? Gru. Gru. Ah, oh, Gru in the Minions. That's a good one too. And often we just like to think about heroes, but today we're going to talk about villains who transform into heroes. And there are a lot of those. All right, boys, can you say bye? Bye. bye. All right. So Darth Vader and Gru, those are excellent examples of some villains who later become heroes by the end of the story. And today we're talking about one of my all-time favorite villain to hero transformations. So I want you to go ahead and keep thinking about some more villains who maybe later turn into heroes. If you can think of some of those, go ahead and put those down in the comments as you watch this video. So we're going to jump back into our study of the book of Acts. And by now, you should be pretty good at finding the book of Acts. So if you have your Bible with you, Acts is in the New Testament. It is right after the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. Last week, our story was all about Peter and how Peter began to preach the message of Jesus to the Gentiles. This week, we're going to learn all about this guy whose name was Saul. And this is our villain of the day. So Saul, at first, was a pretty bad dude. And he was a Jewish leader. And he thought that he was doing things for God. And he was there when Stephen was killed. If you remember the story about Stephen, it says that Saul was there giving approval when he was killed. And then Saul started to go around from house to house and drag the Christians out of their house and put them in jail. So he really was a bad guy and he was fighting and working against the Christians. He didn't want anybody to teach and preach in the name of Jesus. So this is where we're gonna pick up our story and see what happens to Saul. So this is Acts chapter nine. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He was so bad, it was like it was coming from inside of him. He was breathing out murderous threats. He was really, really angry, and he really hated the church. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So we're going to pretend this was Saul. He goes to the high priest in Jerusalem and he gets approval to travel to the city of Damascus, which was quite a ways away from Jerusalem, like 150 miles. And he wants to go there and find the Christians and arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem. So he's on the road, he's on his way there and he gets close to Jerusalem. And the heavens are opened and he hears a voice that says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. So we're going to pretend that Damascus is over here. 
in Jerusalem where Saul came from is over here. So he falls down. He he sees the light. He sees Jesus. Jesus talks to him. And when he gets back up, he can't see anything. So these guys have to lead him whoops, into Damascus because Saul is now blind. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So Ananias is in his house. He is praying and God visits him in a vision and tells him to go find Saul. And this is what Ananias says. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. So Ananias says, I've heard about this guy, Saul. He is a bad dude. I don't, I don't know if that's such a good idea, God. And God says, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So when God says go, exclamation point, you better go. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and he was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. So Ananias comes, he, he goes to Saul and he says, you're healed in the name of Jesus and the scales fall from his eyes. He's able to see again. He receives the Holy Spirit and he is baptized. What a transformation. Let's see how Saul acted after he met Jesus. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among all those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. So Saul's life was transformed. He was against Jesus before. He was seeking to kill Christians. He was seeking to destroy Christians. He was arresting people. He was trying to go find more Christians so he could take them back to Jerusalem and put them in prison. He, he was determined that he was going to destroy the church. He was the bad guy. Then he met Jesus and everything changed. Now you all recognize this guy. This is Bumblebee and he's a transformer. So right now he is a robot. And I want you to think about Saul's life kind of like a transformer. So he was one way. The old way that Saul was, was that he was trying to kill the Christians. He was against Christianity. He was against Jesus. He was persecuting Jesus. And then he met Jesus on the road and his life began to change. <clears throat> and in the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.17, Paul actually wrote that, and it says that if anyone is in, new, is in Jesus, he is a new creation, the old is gone, and the new has come. So just like this transformer, Paul became a totally new creature after he met Jesus. 
Just like a transformer changes from one thing into another, God can take our lives and change us from being one way into being a whole new way. Saul received the Holy Spirit that day, and he was changed from a man who hated Jesus, from a man who was hurting people, from a man who was trying to destroy the church, into somebody who loved Jesus so much. And he went on to become one of the greatest heroes of the Christian faith ever, from villain to hero. What a transformation. And also, he gets a new name. He begins to be called Paul. For the rest of the Bible, he's referred to as Paul. He's not He's not Saul anymore. It's like that old guy is gone and he is dead. Just like the Bible says, when we know Jesus, he can change our life forever and for good. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about maybe some of the things in your own life that God maybe needs to change. Maybe some of the things that you do, kind of as the villain, the bad choices you make, the sins that you have in your life, maybe some of those things need to change. And the way that happens is by confessing your sins and asking for the power of the Holy Spirit to come into your life, to choose to follow Jesus and say, God, make me new, make me different. Forgive me for the old things that I've done. Help me to be a new creation in you. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the story of the life of Paul. We thank you that you changed him from the villain to the hero. We praise you for your awesome power to be able to change someone even like Paul. Help us to see the things in our lives that need changed and give those things to you so that you can make us new, so that we can lead people to you and help others find you and follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. So, our Zoom meeting will not be tomorrow because tomorrow is Memorial Day. We will change our Zoom meetings all till Tuesday, okay? So, 4th and 5th graders will be at 1 o'clock, 2nd and 3rd graders will be at 2 o'clock, and kindergarten and 1st graders will be at 3 o'clock. We have a lot of fun in those meetings. If you've never joined us before, have your parents check their email. I will send an email invitation for that tomorrow night and you just click that link and it takes you right into our Zoom meeting at the time that it starts. So we watch our Bible story video, we pray for each other, and we just talk and hang out. It's a really great time. So I hope that you'll join us for that. I love you all. I'm praying for you and I'll see you soon.